As a fantasy lover, I am fortunate to have been born and live in Wales where ancient castles and old derelict ruins are seemingly situated everywhere. However, while using these locations for short fantasy films is excellent, the locations themselves have often had society move on around it. For example, this ruin is situated on the doorstep of a massive defunct power plant. Not ideal for the shot of a hiker exploring old castle ruins in the mountain. In the days gone by, I would opt towards using the classic portable green screen in order to comp a more relevant location into the background. Using a portable green screen allows the actress to move freely throughout the composition without laborious rotoscoping. Additionally, the rotoscoping job here would be a nightmare as the actress's hair blows in the wind and we also have bugs flying past the camera. However, this has got me thinking. In recent years, powerful machine learning tools like After Effects' Roto Brush and DaVinci Resolve's Magic Brush have removed many tedious rotoscoping tasks. Likewise, over the last few months, we have also seen a rapid increase in AI-based background removers such as Runway's ML tool. Therefore, today we will explore whether the trusty old portable green screen is still needed when the tools of AI are seemingly endless. First, let's run over the portable green screen basics. Proper lighting is crucial when using a green screen, especially when outdoors. You want to ensure that your green screen is evenly lit without any shadows or hot spots, which would make removing the background more difficult in post-production. You'll also want to ensure that your subject is not casting any shadows onto the green screen. So this is our shot. Now it's important to note that the compositional aspect of this tutorial is not important. So we're not about to see some great wonders of compositing, but just how well the portable green screen fares against the AI removal tools. If we click play, as previously noted, this could be a tricky qualification because we have the bugs flying past the camera and the actress's hair is loose and blows in the wind. In After Effects, we'll follow a popular removal process to remove the green screen. So we're gonna to head to the effects menu and look for the key light effect. And although you can apply the key light effect independently, we will also use the key cleaner and advanced spill suppression for this method. So we're gonna drag and place all of these effects onto our clip and then go to the effects control panel displaying the three effects. And for the time being, we're just gonna disable key cleaner and advanced spill, spill suppression, sorry. So we're gonna look at the key light effect initially and use the dropper tool to pick the key color aiming for a medium green, green shade that is neither too dark or new bright. Uh, but thankfully in our case, this shade of green is pretty much flat throughout. And you're gonna wanna pick the dropper near the subjects here. So we're gonna navigate to the view and switch it to screen matte to evaluate the matte's quality. There is of course room for improvement as there are numerous gray areas uh, present. And gray signifies slight transparency, but ideally you want the foreground to be entirely white and the background to be pure black. To eliminate the gray areas, uh, we're going to address adjust the screen map controls. So let's open up the clip black controls and we're going to use the slider and move it to the right, clipping the black until part of the gray disappears. You want to avoid excess clipping as this could trim the hair too much. Uh, we're just going to aim for very minimal adjustments here. Now, one important thing to remember is obviously this is very specific to this shot um, and each clip is unique. So uh, this is very much gonna be a mess around tool, but I'm just gonna run you through the process of, of how I would usually uh, key out a green screen. And then we're gonna adjust the clip white by moving the slider left, revealing more of the hair detail. And if, as you're moving this, you may actually then need to go back to the clip black and move that further along, uh, since the white can also reintroduce the gray areas into the background. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. It's looking fairly decent. Uh, now, if this is all great, we're just going to close the screen matte tools, switch back the view to the uh, intermediate result. And let's look at the subjects here. So we've still got some, you know, green residual. And also, it's quite jagged around the edges, which is quite unappealing for, uh, for our subject. So now this is where we're going to use the key cleaner um, effect. So we're going to enable this. However, uh, if I click play, we're gonna see this sort of jittiness, and this is called chattering. Um, this is essentially occurring because the key light struggles to discern transparency due to the hair softness. Now, fortunately, the key cleaner offers a reduce chatter option, which can be enabled to resolve this issue. And upon playback, you'll notice the chattering is pretty much gone, which is great. So if we prefer a less soft edge around the hair, we can also reduce the edge radius here, around about five, six. 
Again, we don't want to lower it too much. I think one of the core elements with pulling a, a green key is the adjustments are to be minimal, especially when it involves uh, loose hair strands like this. However, we can see here in between the individual hair strands, um, there are still areas of green that remains. So now what we're going to do is turn on the advanced spill, su spill suppressor, a little, little bit of a tongue twister, uh, to address this. And you know what? It really neutralizes uh, the green screen almost instantly. And it actually does this by transforming the background into a navy blue slash dark gray, um, effectively eliminating the green spill in the hair. And this is a, a crucial step when you're working with hair strands like this. Now this is a great shot. It's ready to be comped. Okay, so let's look at our possible AI tools. First, we're gonna look at the browser-based tool from Runway ML. Runway ML is a software platform that allows artists, designers, developers, and researchers, and so forth, to easily create and train and deploy machine learning models for various creative and practical applications. So they have a background remover, and it's a machine learning model that is designed to remove the background, not only from videos, but images too. It is based on a technique known as semantic segmentation, which involves labeling each pixel in an image or video as part of, their fore as part of the foreground or background. And the model is trained on a large data set of images and videos, which allows it to identify the foreground and remove objects from the background accurately. So the platform does require a subscription, uh, but we can use at least one of the three free project spaces for this tutorial. So when we're on the site, you just need to import your footage from your desktop up to the cloud and then add it to the timeline. And then we're gonna click to green screen. Then when we're in the background remover operation, we're going to draw on our actress using the brush tool. And this is very similar to the type of brush tools that can be found in Photoshop, Resolve, After Effects, any sort of these desk tape at desktop applications that have a brush roto feature. So we're gonna draw on the subject and the model will separate our subject from the background. Now, of course, we have an issue with it negating the wall because that's not necessarily the purpose of our shot, but the AI is trained to see the wall as part of the background, which I guess it kind of is uh, in the sense of the compositional uh, elements. However, um, that is something that we would then have to later fix. So in our workflow, this is going to be adding an additional step. We'd likely maybe bring it into After Effects or your NLE and then mask the wall back into the shot so then we can later comp the removed background. I know there is the option here where we can add a brush to include the wall, but I'm not getting the results I need to when I do this. So after painting onto our subject and excluding any areas like under the arm that has been caught up in the background removal, we can see that the green screen application on Runway ML has been able to pull the actress with just a few simple brush strokes, which is fantastic. This application would have been game changing back in the early 2010s when rotoscoping was so meticulous. However, we can see that it hasn't really done a great job with the hair, with the, and especially when it starts to blow in the wind. And while it's certainly been able to mask the shape of the actress's outline, it leaves too much of the background visible, like where the mask itself is somewhat too round and I guess too perfect, it's as if there's no contouring to the subject. Now, it's important to note that the Runway ML background remover is a machine learning model and it works by analyzing the patterns and images to identify the background and what is the foreground. And while the model can accurately detect and separate models from the objects from the background, sorry, it's imperfect and it can struggle with more complex images, such in our case with hair or fine detail. As such, we may need to use additional techniques such as manual masking or advanced compositing to achieve the desired result. But in my professional opinion, with these hair strands and how it's not been able to pull that, and the fact that the background is somewhat of the same hue as the actress's top and skin tone, it's gonna create a whole load of work. And personally, I don't see it being feasible. 
So next we're gonna have a look at how the machine learning process found in common compositors and LR NLEs work in comparison to both the browser-based AI tool and the green screen. Now we've actually already written and produced a video about DaVinci Resolve's masking tool, the Magic Mask or the Magic Brush. And you can find that video here. Therefore today, we're just gonna look at using After Effects Roto Brush. Okay, so like Runway's ML tool, there's no real scientific mask creation method or really a proper tutorial to demonstrate in regards of using After Effects Roto Brush. So we're simply gonna add the clip to a composition. We're gonna double click the clip to bring it to the layer window, then select this here, the Roto Brush. From here, you simply draw a line or two over your subject. Uh, wait until After Effects creates the mask and then further refine it. And then we can use the exclusion tool, which I believe is Alt. Alt click until the uh, circle turns red. And then you'll see a faint pink line around the subject's automatically masked areas. And upon hitting play, After Effects will start to render and cache the mask for playback. And from here, you can make any additional adjustments if you file, if you see that it hasn't correctly masked an area. And we're already seeing much better results from After Effects Roto Brush. The mask is closer to the subject than the browser-based AI tool, identifying more of the subjects here. And additionally, there are a varying degree of adjustable parameters in the effects controls that can give us a seemingly better mask than the browser-based tool. And like pulling the green screen key, the parameters here are gonna be very shot dependent, but the Roto Brush matte tools are gonna to be key in creating a better mask. However, once again, given the complexity of the shot, we're still seeing issues with the hair, the bugs, and the background areas within the image. And here's the thing, I'm not at all saying that these tools are inadequate or rubbish. In fact, you know, as I previously noted, they would have been a game changer back in the day. But I am of the impression that you really do need to have a certain type of model to extract, or at the very least prep beforehand so your talent doesn't have any flowing bits of hair or perhaps objects which uh, flow outside of them, you know, maybe like um, the belt that you would find on someone's jacket. Because if we look at these clips from the Fediva library, we can see that this, the subject is static or even when they're moving, it's a very solid object that the AI and uh, the machine learning protocols can pick up instantly, extract that model and give you a really solid mask. But for the meantime, when you do have hair flowing or perhaps more tricky qualifications, the portable green screen is gonna remain that tool. So I've been Lewis with Fedivo. I hope this has been an informative decision, an informative tutorial, I should say. If you're going out shooting uh, and you decide that you're going to ditch the green screen in favor of AI, perhaps it's not that time just yet.